Hello, Professor McFalvey. So we're going to talk about this new book you have coming out called A Brief History of Blood and Lymphatic Vessels. I'd like to ask just how you got the idea to write this book. Um, I'm a professor here at the University of Bordeaux, and I'm heading an INSEM unit that is uh, working on angiogenesis and the relation to cancer. I'm involved since long time into the field, and at one moment I got the idea why not to write up a history, a comprehensive history uh, of the field that is both understandable for the specialists, the scientists, and the general public. Furthermore, that would be a useful book for students and postdocs or scientists who want to do research in this field. The idea came in 2008 when the Pope or the founder of angiogenesis, Judah Falkman, died. And at that moment I said also to myself, why not write a book like this? But this book has really substantiated, the writing of this book has substantiated only since three to four years. Okay. Well, would you be able to explain a little bit um, blood and lymphatic vessels, what they are? Yeah, what they are, the blood and lymphatic vessels are organized. I mean, the blood vessels are organized in a circulation. It's a circulatory system with veins and arteries and the, the let's say, the structure of the blood vessels. Is, uh, it depends on if, you, if we look on small or large blood vessels. Small blood vessels have a pretty straightforward and easy structure. It means they are uh, made of endothelial cells, and there are some accessory cells on the endothelial cell tube also. However, larger blood vessels are more complex, so they have uh, the endothelium, which is uh, in contact with the, with the blood, but they have also smooth muscle cell layer and also an advantage that is around that. And the venous part is structured a little bit in a similar vein, of course. And when we talk about the lymphatic, there the system is very different because the lymphatic, it's an open system. It's an open system that is, uh, drains only fluids and uh, the basic ingredient of this open system is the lymphatic endothelial cell. It is, has not at all the same, uh, the same uh, let's say, uh, same aspects or as, as an endothelium from, for instance, arteries or, or veins. So uh, could you please provide some examples of historical developments that have happened in this field? The historical developments, I mean, are, uh, there are a lot of historical developments, in fact. I mean, we can subdivide it simply in a pre-Harveyan -Har uh, phase, in which, uh, the, uh, let's say, the blood circulation was an open system. And uh, everyone reasoned as a kind of open system, and of course it was related to theology a lot, because they, people wanted to explain the, how the vital spirit is uh, transported, I mean, in the body. So what, that was, in fact, the idea. So science and theology at that time were, 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 were in fact, linked a lot. So I will describe all this uh, evolution of the pre-Harveyan phase and period, but also of the, of the period that came after Harvey. That is, uh, what is, for instance, the, the structure that is linking in the tissues, the arteries and the veins. And of course, all, if they are made of cells or not made of cells, or just matrix, or just only cells in the tissue, and there's no organized blood vessel structure. So all these theories existed at that time. And of course, it has, uh, subsequent research has come up to really find out what really happens. And then, of course, afterwards, how not only the structure, how this is organized, but how this is formed in the body. And this is, has in fact, opened up a new entire field 
that is called angiogenesis. And this is uh, what is in fact in this book. Okay, so this angiogenesis, this creation and development of blood vessels, how is it leaked to, uh, linked to human health? Uh, I mean, in angiogenesis, you have two, uh, let's say two aspects. You have an excess or defect of angiogenesis. And you have diseases that are linked to excess and defects of angiogenesis, which is described in, in extenso in this, in this book. Uh, just example, a disease that is closely linked to angiogenesis is cancer, where you have an excess of angiogenesis and uh, what we called angiogenesis in tumors. Uh, that is, uh, the inter this interaction is important, but it affects the growth of the tumor, how the tumor is developing, and also it had become a target for the treatment of cancer. Of course, there are some problems with it, and it's discussed in extenso in this, in this book too, but this is, for instance, one disease where it is important. Other diseases are myocardial infarction, where you have, for instance, uh, a part of your, of your heart will die and angiogenesis has to be formed uh, to uh, real bit to circumcise the area of the infarction and can be also stimulated to decrease the size of the infarcted zone. So third example, and then I will stop with these examples because I could go on forever, is in fact eye disease. Is, uh, in eye disease, for instance, uh, in diabetic retinopathy or, or AMD, uh, in these diseases you have, uh, may have an alteration of angiogenesis with sometimes a defect, little defect, but also excess. And these diseases can be treated and quite successfully with anti-angiogenic treatment, which are now in the clinic. So just a few examples of this relation uh, to uh, vascular development and disease. Okay, and how has the study of vasculature been significant for science as a whole? It has been significant because a lot of steps that in, let's say, that in the philosophy of science you, 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 you see and you identified are there and uh, can be also uh, put forward as an example for how science is evolving and what are the crucial ingredients that science is evolving. Just a few examples, what is, for instance, uh, what, I mean, in the blood, in, in, let's say in the vessels, you have uh, in vertebrates, you have mainly the endothelium as an organizing principle. In invertebrates, not at all the case, you have a kind of, uh, let's say, epithelium that is there, that is the organic principle, but this epithelium is not exposed to the uh, fluid phase. So it's the matrix that is exposed to the fluid phase. So the question is how the shift from this organizing principle, let's say, from the epithelium to the endothelium, has occurred during evolution. So what is in fact, what makes the endothelium an organizing principle? This is just one example. Example, another example is for instance, the, I mean, cross fertilization of domains that in fact, angiogenesis has progressed mainly through the research on cancer. If angiogenesis, if the vascular biology would not have gone through the cancer, if tumor angiogenesis would not have been studied, then no angiogenic factor would have ever been identified because the tumor is a, a rich source of these stimulating factors. So you have a kind of shift from the domains, it started in cancer, but then it spread all over. It spread in, in developmental biology, in, uh, it spread in cardiology, 
in rheumatology. I mean, all, all kinds of diseases uh, and research areas have been affected by it. Okay? So that, that's the, this is, let's say, two examples from this uh, general meaning how a scientific domain uh, is transposed from one entity, from one uh, larger domain to another. And, uh, and I will treat this, uh, this, of, this is just, just two examples for, for, for this, for this uh, general meaning. And they are, let's say, more cited in, in I'm, I mean, in the book, in my, my book. And uh, I think the reader will, it f think will find it quite interesting to, to read. And also, uh, especially also people who maybe are involved in other areas of science may, may find that interesting. Okay, well, thank you, Professor Vic Balvi. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>